careful. Oh, I, I she, she, you, you right about that.
had a story. Gracious Father, we just want to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, just for being so good to us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Lord, we thank you because you woke us up this morning, started us on fire, and us in our right hand, and given us. That's the portion of it. Lord, we so glad because uh, many people did bring up this morning. But you, but you believe you still here, Lord. Lord, we, we, we thank you for this opportunity to praise you, to, to fellowship. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Yes, I'm sorry. Thank <laughs> you. 
Right. We'll move on to our announcement that concern.
considered to be in God's house again. It's definitely a blessing to be able to, to, be able to see each other again. And especially all that's going on. And the devil, the devil and God's grace that we are still here. There's nothing that we've done to uh, that, 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 that we deserve in this. And uh, we must always acknowledge God and who we are today. We're going to uh, move on to our uh, sermon today, first chapter 18 through 25. And since it's been the Christmas season, I will uh, use a theme the birth of the The birth of a state. We are in a home stretch in our preparation for Christmas or, or getting ready to get started or whatever, or, or, or whatever we might be arguing. Some of us are making preparation to spend time with family and friends. Some of us are preparing for various Christmas activities. All of those things are good. But we should be focused on the reason for the season. Amen. And we should be celebrating the birth of a Savior. Amen. And looking at our text on this morning, Mary was engaged to be married to Job, but the wedding at this point had not taken place. Now, in, during the New Testament times, uh, uh, engaged or they, they use the term betrothal, uh, which was more binding than your engagement today. See, when you get, get engaged today, you can break off the engagement. Mm -hmm. But if you in a betrothal, it's, it's almost like you're already married to that person, even though you have not officially got married. And the only way you can break the, the, uh, the betrothal during that time is the divorce. So, it, in other words, it was really binding during that time. Uh, now, although an engaged couple did live together until morning, our faithfulness on the part of the betrothed person was treated as a Dutch and punishable by death. The Virgin Mary became pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I had have previously announced this mysterious event to Mary in Luke 135 when it said, the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Now, during this time, a cloud of suspicion has scattered. Uh, was was hung over Mary because here's the person who's engaged. Here's a person supposedly fit with a virgin. She was pregnant. Now, back during that time, no one knew anything about. So, in today's time, we uh, 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 about what's going on. Okay? But, you know, so when they look at that, they assume that she probably was tipping out with, with somebody. Or, and, and not only did they feel like she was tipping out, and, and, but, and you know, they consider that adultery. But, uh, Joseph, in his mind, he was kind of wondering too what was going on, and he probably had some in his heart towards uh, his fiance. Uh, on two accounts, the first one is she was probably unfaithful to him, and and he probably also was looking at now if he. Uh, let her get away with it. They would consider him being complicit. So they would probably get on him for allowing her to get away with that. But the love that he had for Mary and 
desire for justice led him to decide to break off the betrothal quiet. He wanted to avoid public disgrace, which normally accompany action like this. While this gentle and deliberate man was mapping out his strategies to protect Mary, an angel of the Lord appealed to him and the salutation Joseph, son of David, was doubtless designed to stir up the conscience of his ancestors and to prepare him for the unusual advent or coming of the Messiah. Joseph was told not to have any reservation about Mary. Uh, Mary. He was told that it's okay. Don't worry about her pregnancy. Uh, any suspicion you had about Mary was basis. He, uh, he announced he made him realize that her pregnancy was a miracle of the Holy Spirit. The unborn child. Name and mission. Mary would have a son. He was to be named Jesus, which means that God is salvation. Or God the same. True to his name, Jesus will save his people from their sin, which includes each of us that's sitting in here today. This child of destiny was to save people from and eventually, as Matthew recorded these events had emerged in the history of God's dealing with the human race. The words of a and now, Isaiah's scripted prophecy was now fulfilled, and Mary's child, Matthew, said, All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Matthew claimed divine inspiration for the words of it. Isaiah about Jesus, which Isaiah had prophesied this at least 700 years before Christ. The prophecy of Isaiah 714 included the foretelling of the unique bird that said, Behold, the bird shall conceive. The sex of the child is said, and bear a son. And the name of the child is said, and she shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. Now, there is no record of Christ ever being called Emmanuel during the time he walked on this earth. He was always called Jesus during that time. Moving on, as a result of the angels' intervention, Joseph decided to forsake his plan to divorce Mary. Joseph continued to recognize their engagement until the birth of Jesus, after which then he married Mary. And taking Mary as his wife, Joseph also took Jesus, her child, as his adopted son. This is how Jesus became the legal heir to the throne of David. In obedience to this angelic visitor, Joseph called the baby Jesus. See, during that time, the father was responsible for the name of his son at the time of that child's circumcision, which was eight years. words implicitly commanded that Joseph accept his foe as the father of his child. During that time, names were often thought to be emblematic of the character or calling of the individual. Thus, the Messiah 
the, the king was born. The eternal one entered into time. The omnipotent or all-powerful God became a tiny infant. The Lord of glory veiled that glory in a human body, and in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, according to Colossians 2 and 9. In closing, as we move towards Christmas Day, remember the reason for this season. And I will leave you with one point to this message. That point is that the birth of Jesus is the best gift that we ever received. Amen. The birth of Jesus is the best gift that we ever received. The birth of Jesus paved the, plan, paved the way for God's plan for our salvation. The birth of Jesus led to the death of Jesus. The death of Jesus led to his resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus to his ascension into the heaven. Right now, Jesus has empowered the Holy Spirit to continue to work in our lives by helping us to continue to grow to become more like Christ. Jesus is responsible for our spiritual growth. Because of Jesus, sin does not have power over our lives. Because of Jesus, we can face any difficulty in our lives. Because of Jesus, we can face sickness in our lives. Because of Jesus, we can deal with the thirst of Jesus. We can show love and compassion to everybody. Because of Jesus, we are empowered to help more people. Because of Jesus, we are able to do our part to transform our communities that represent or resemble God's kingdom. Because that God wants us to be. Because of Jesus, we can be the humble. Because of Jesus, we can clothe the nature. Because of Jesus, we can visit the lonely. Because of Jesus, we can visit those who are in jail. Because of Jesus, we can fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. Because of Jesus, we can point others to Christ. Because of Jesus, we can tell the good news about Jesus and his work on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. Because of Jesus, we can tell others that Christ loved them just as they are. Amen. Because of Jesus, we can tell others that they don't have to be perfect. Just as Christ. Because of Jesus, we can tell them that Jesus will do the work of transforming their lives spiritually, emotionally, physically, and mentally. Because of Jesus, we can tell them that they can be saved by accepting that Jesus died on the cross for them. And they, all they got to do is surrender their lives to Jesus. Accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Because of Jesus, Satan is defeated in the name of Jesus. Whatever you got going on, Jesus is already taking care of that on the cross. Just give it all to Jesus and he'll work everything out for you. Whether you're having financial problems, give it to Jesus. Whether you're having difficulties on job, give it to Jesus. Whether you're having difficulties even within families, give it to Jesus. Whether you have problems within our communities, give it to Jesus. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. Don't let nobody get you caught up in the commercialization of Christmas because none of that can save you. Amen. Jesus came. He died. He rose from the dead for you and for me. He didn't have to do it, but he came down from glory to shape in the form of a little bit of baby born in a nasty, filthy trunk that's 
surrounded by animals all around him, but he did it for you and for me. So no matter what your circumstances are, are in your life, remember that the birth of Jesus became your problem solver. So your problem is already solved in the name of Jesus. No matter what, if you are sick, get of sickness, you are always healed in the name of Jesus. It may not be on this side, but either way, you are still healed in the name of Jesus because when you go up, we come back down for us. He gonna say, well done, that good and faithful servant. He gonna tell you, come on in. You don't have to worry about sickness. You don't have to worry about disappointment. You don't have to worry about heartache. You don't have to worry about death. Because none of that you have to deal with anymore. Because Jesus said, I conquered it all on that cross for all of you. All you got to do is give your life to Jesus in every day that's taking place. Then you are still. Delivered and set free. You are liberated in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The doors of the church is open. Is there anyone here? Looking for a church home, there's room for you here at Hell's Chapel. There's room for you as much that he gave his life. All you got to do is just say yes. Never too young or too old to give your life to Jesus. Whatever you want. Amen. Amen. See that there's no. He just said, God, each of you that's here today. We just thank God for the life that He's given us. Because He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. Uh, but He. Continue to bless us each and you know every single day. Amen. Amen. Do we have any in and out? The other announcement that it claims our attention before we before we uh see the code. There'll be none. We're gonna we're gonna stand for our closing song, Silent Night. To just found our uh, <laughs>
Mary, never forget the significance of the birth of the Savior. May we be empowered by love as Jesus loved us. May we be empowered to help those who are in need. May we be empowered to be a reflection of Jesus. May we be empowered to point the law to Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. 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 You showed up today. <laughs>